Good morning. Hello, everyone. Are you all well? Thank you so much for joining me today. You are very welcome. Happy Farm Safety Week. It is Farm Safety Week. And for the next number of days, I am on a very special mission. My name is Alma, and my very special mission is to create a whole world full of agri kids. Yeah. So by listening in on today's webinar today, you're going to become part of that army part of that group, that special club of agri-kids. And it means you're going to become an expert in farm safety. What do you think of that? It's pretty cool, isn't it? And by being an expert in farm safety, hi, Cueva Stevens, great to see you. Thank, for, thank you for coming in. As you become an expert in farm safety, that means you get to tell the grown-ups what to do. You get to boss them around. And if they need some help and advice on farm safety, then you can help them, okay? So for today's session, which is very kindly sponsored by Flow Gas, and we're going to have a little competition later on where you can win some Flow Gas goodies. In today's session, we're going to learn all about the different kind of signs that you might see on a farm. Yeah. And on Wednesday's session, we're going to learn a little bit more about animals and their signs. And on Friday, we're going to learn a little bit about machinery and all the different types of vehicles that we use on our farms. But for today, we're going to look at the different signs. And why do you think we might need signs on our farm? Hmm, well, let's think about it. There's a few things on our farms that might need a sign. Like if we were in the hay shed with all maybe the bales of hay or the bales of straw, they're going to be coming into our sheds pretty soon. What kind of sign would I need there? Hmm, good idea, well done, yeah. You could fall in there. So farmers gotta be really careful working with the bales. Don't think that they, that they don't fall or take a tumble. Oh, yeah, that's another one. Things might fall on top of them. So there's two signs that we need on our farm and that's just in one place so far. What other signs might I need? Isn't he handsome? Say hello to Barney. Put up your hands if you've ever seen a bull before. Have you ever seen a bull before? Oh, you have. Well done, guys. Well done. Yes, indeed. Isn't he handsome? What kind of sign would we need for him? That's a simple one, isn't it? Yeah, we got to make sure that if he's out in the field, that we let people know because you see all the cows here, he's minding them. So we got to warn people, don't go in there when the bull is doing his work. because He doesn't really want you inside there. OK, yeah, yeah. <gasps> now, this is very important. Everybody show me your number one finger. Show me no number one, number one. Tractors, machinery, they're the number one danger on our farm. So we definitely got to have to have a sign for these. What kind of sign? Yeah, of course. One that tells people that there's tractors or that there's machinery in, in use. And there's going to be loads of this work on at the moment. A lot of people may be on second cut of haylage or silage. Yeah. And I know few farms have already started the corn harvest, haven't they? Yeah. So a lot of combines. And that means there's going to be trailers full of corn all along the roads. So it's going to be a really busy time for tractors and machinery. Mm -hmm. What's that one? Cow drinking water? Is, is that dangerous? Cows got to drink water, don't they? Yeah. Oh, I get it. Water itself could be dangerous, couldn't it? That's a great sign. If we see a sign like that, does it mean we go closer to the water or further away? Hands up if you think we need to go further away. Let's have a look. Who's putting up their hand? Oh, brilliant. Well done, guys. Absolutely. Well done, Emma. You're absolutely right. We always go further away when we see a sign like that. So, guys, there's some of the signs that we might see around a farm. But before we learn a little bit more about them, who'd like a story? We have a little story, yeah? Because I've written some books for children all about how to stay safe on the farm. And the one we're going to read today is The Tree Swing. And this is a very, this was the first storybook that I wrote. And we're going to meet Tom. 
his little sister, Sarah, and this funny little guy. Say hello to Mr. Brambles. Now, I need to let you know, Mr. Brambles is not a fairy. He's not a leprechaun. And even though he's got big ears, he's not related to Dumbo. Uh-uh, he's a hedge sprite. And hedge sprites have really special powers. So we're gonna find out today what happened when Tom and Sarah went to the farm on their own? That wasn't a good idea, wasn't it? Not. Mm -mm. Let's find out what happened. Down a twisty lane near the village of Ballymally, you'll find Riverside Farm. Tom and Sarah live on Riverside Farm with their mammy and their daddy and their sheepdog Meg. They've loads of animals on their farm, like hens and geese and sheep and some cows. But the children's favorite animals were the hens because every day after school they got to gather up the eggs and bring them home to make scrambled eggs and toast for tea now as we all know farms are very busy places and every autumn daddy is back out in the red tractor plowing up the field for the next crop but for our story today it's the summer and the children just got their summer holidays <sighs> i'm bored said tom <sighs> Me too, said Sarah, because there's nothing to do. Nonsense, says Mammy. There's loads to do. Why don't you go outside and find your tent? If it says nice and dry, you can pack a picnic and camp outdoors. Wow, the children love this idea. And out they ran as quickly as they could to find their tent. In no time at all, they had it made. And that night, they were snuggled in their sleeping bags, drinking hot chocolate and eating their picnic tea. Yummy, said Sarah. Sandwiches taste much better outside. <laughs> Meg the sheepdog was there too. She wanted to get a few of their sandwiches. Suddenly Meg began to sniff the air. Dogs can smell things that we can't. <laughs> they began to growl and bark. What's wrong, Meg? asked Sarah. Is there something outside? Sarah zipped open the tent and Meg dashed out. Woo, 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 woo. She was growling and barking at the hedge right beside the tent. Tom, said Sarah, I think there's something in the hedge. Sarah went to get a closer look and from deep inside the hedge, she heard a little voice saying, help, please help. Help, said Sarah, there's somebody in the hedge and they need our help. Tom came out of the tent and threw his half-eaten sandwich to Meg, who ran off after it. Hello, said Tom. It, it, it's safe to come out now. Are you sure, said the little voice. Is that dog gone? Yes, said the children. Yes, she is. And suddenly the hedge began to glow. It glowed and glowed and glowed and got so bright the children had to cover their eyes. And when they opened them again, they couldn't believe what they saw. A creature no bigger than a tin of beans was fluttering right in front of their eyes. He was able to fly because his ears were as big as butterfly wings. He was the weirdest creature the children had ever seen. Who are you? asked Tom. The little creature lifted his hat from his head and says, how do you do? I'm Mr. Brambles. Are you a fairy? asked Tom. A fairy, said Mr. Brambles. I'm nothing like a fairy. Fairies are only good for collecting old teeth and being very bossy. I am a hedge sprite and our magic is far more important. Yeah, right, said Sarah. What kind of magic does a hedge sprite do? Hands up if you've ever smelt a flower. Oh, quite a few. Well done. Hands up if you've ever seen apples appear on a tree. Blackberries in a bush? Wow, then you guys have a hedge sprite living very close by because they make all the magic of nature happen. Whoa, said Sarah, that's amazing magic, Mr. Brambles. Ah, but look at you, you're shivering. Would you like some of our hot chocolate? It'll warm you up. <coughs> Inside the tent, Mr. Brambles was being very greedy as he slurped on the creamy hot chocolate. Oh, children, he said, thank you so much for saving me. Oh, I don't like dogs very much. That's okay, said Tom. I'm just glad we're in the right place at the right time. 
In fact, said Mr. Brambles, I'd like to be able to help you guys one day. But you must remember to call me a very special way. So remember this rhyme. Should you ever be in fear, call three times and I will hear. Let's all say that together. Should you ever be in fear, call three times and I will hear. And with that, he fluttered those huge ears and disappeared in a flash. Well, the children were so excited, they didn't sleep a wink. And the next morning, they gobbled down their breakfast and ran outside to try and find their little friend. But they couldn't find him anywhere. I know, said Tom. Maybe Mr. Brambles is on the farm. We could look there. Now the children knew they were never to go to the farm on their own. But they really wanted to find Mr. Brambles. Come on, Sarah, said Tom. Mammy and Daddy will never know. Down on the farm, Daddy and Jack the farmhand were very busy scraping out the cow shed of all this stinky cow poo. Ugh, said Sarah. That is disc. Shh, Sarah, said Tom. Daddy or Jack see us, we'll be in so much trouble. Come on, let's look over here. The children ran to the back paddock. Maybe Mr. Brambles was going to be in there. But instead of finding Mr. Brambles, the children found something else, the old tire swing. The swing had been there a very, 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 very long time. And the rope was very old and very tashy and not safe at all. Oh, no, Tom, said Sarah, we shouldn't be in here. Come on, let's look somewhere else. But Tom was being very naughty. He climbed into the ring of that old swing and began to swing himself as high and as fast as he could go. He said, going higher and higher. Tom, said Sarah, get out of that swing. But the butterflies were tickling Tom's tummy and that made him want to go even higher and even faster. Wee, wee, look at me, look at me. He said, going higher and higher. Tom, said Sarah, getting a little bit angry now. Get out of that swing. But the wind was whistling in Tom's ears and he couldn't hear his sister's voice anymore. Higher and higher faster and faster, until suddenly the old rope began to make a very strange noise. Creak, creak, creak. Tom, said Sarah, please get out of that swing. Creak, creak, creak. Sarah was getting worried. She felt something bad could happen at any moment. Was her time to go and get Dad? He'd be cross if he knew they were on the farm. Creak, creak, creak. What? Then Sarah remembered. What had Mr. Bramble said the night before? Should you ever be in fear, call three times and I will hear. But could that really work? Creak, creak, creak. Without a moment to lose, Sarah quickly closed her eyes and said, eh, Mr. Brambles, Mr. Brambles, Mr. Brambles. But it was too late. The rope snapped and Tom wasn't flying anymore. Instead, he was falling all the way towards the ground. Tom, shouted Sarah. She couldn't bear to look. But when she did look again, she couldn't believe what she saw. Her brother not falling, but floating right above the ground. Floating as if by magic. Hedge sprite magic. On his shoulder appeared Mr. Brambles. Whew, Tom, aren't you lucky Sarah remembered what to do? Yeah, said Tom. Thanks, Sarah, and thank you, Mr. Brambles. <clears throat> said Mr. Brambles. I think swings and things are just for the playground or your back garden. Then there was another voice, an angry voice. It was Daddy. He'd heard Sarah shouting and was coming to see what was going on. Children, are you out in the paddock? He shouted as he ran. Oh no, said Mr. Brambles. I can't let a grown-up see me. Remember, children, never go to the farm on your own. And with that, he fluttered those huge ears and disappeared. Daddy was really cross with the children. I told you to never to go to the farm on your own, he said. What are you doing playing on that old swing? You could have been badly hurt, Tom. Did you ask for permission to come here? No, Dad, said the children. Sorry, we won't do it again. No, you won't, said Daddy, because I'm clearing away that swing once and for all. Later that day, as Daddy tidied away the swing and threw the tire with all the others onto the silage pit, he was still feeling pretty angry and pretty cross. I should have, I should have cleared this swing away ages ago, he said. 
what am I going to do to make sure the children don't go to the farm on their own? Suddenly, Daddy's eyes lit up. I've got it, he smiled. Not long afterwards, Mr. Brown was heard giggling in the children's back garden. He poked his head out through his little hedge house and saw the children playing on a brand new set of swings. Whee! said Tom as he went down the yellow slide. It even had a treehouse. It was a very happy sight indeed. And as he lay tucked up in his little hedge bed, Mr. Brambles knew there wouldn't be another tree swing on Riverside Farm ever again. So guys, hands up if you think it's a bad idea to go to the farm on your own. Yeah, absolutely, Boola Bus, congratulations. Can I say also guys, you'll see that the Q&A is open. If you want me to say hello, if you have a question, pop it in there. And I'm gonna say a very special hello to MJ Mullins from Michel. And I hope I pronounced that correctly, MJ. It's great to have you along today. So guys, Tom and Sarah went to the farm on their own, which was a pretty bad idea, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. So I was wondering, what could we do? if we want to go and visit a farm to make sure that we're really, really prepared and to make sure that when we, we visit, that we have a safe visit. I got it. How about we do something like create a farm safe checklist? So you know, before you go, the kind of stuff that you can do. Hmm, I have a little pen and paper here to mark off what my things might be. So what kind of things do you need to, does, needs to go onto our list? Oh, who are you going to go with? Tom and Sarah went on their own, which was a really bad idea. So let's see. Granny? Mammy? Auntie? Uncle? Daddy? Yeah, we have somebody? My mammy's going to come with me today. That's brilliant. So tick. We have that one sorted out. Now, what else do we need to know before we go? What kind of farm are we going to? Because there are different types of farms, aren't there? Like we have a dairy farm, there could be a tillage farm. And on a dairy farm, there's gonna be loads of cows and probably a slurry pit. On a tillage farm, there might be loads of different types of machinery and they could be busy today. So do we know what kind of farm it is? Do we? Great job. Then if you know what kind of farm it is, I'm wondering, are there big jobs planned today? On our farm here in County Meath, we're actually doing our, our, our haylage. So we know there's a big job on, there's gonna be a lot of machinery, we're bringing in bales. So do you know what? Big jobs planned, we won't go and visit quite yet. We'll, we'll wait until those big jobs are done. Because when the farmer is working hard, they're not thinking who is coming to visit my farm. They're thinking about getting the job done, okay? Now, if there's no big jobs planned and we're still okay to go, say hello to Isabel. That's my friend Isabel, isn't she great? Isabel's a great girl for feeding calves. Look, there's a little calf here behind her. Excuse me, Isabel, feed me. But you know what, Is Isabel's a great girl for wearing her high-vis vest when she visits a farm. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So we, when we're on a farmyard or going for a walk, maybe along the road, make sure we have our high-vis vests on. Guess what? It's a good idea. If you know of any farmers with livestock in their fields, tell them, don't wear a high-vis vest in, a, in, in the field with the livestock, because you see how shiny that is. Sometimes that can spook or scare the, uh, the animals. So we always make sure we wear it around the yard where there is machinery, in the sheds, or even going for a walk. We ask farmers, don't put them on inside the field, just in case you give the animals a little fright, okay? What else do we need to know? Hmm. What's coming up here? Top tip. Do you know your air code? Do you know your postcode? Just in case something did happen, if you know your air code and your postcode, you can tell the ambulance or the emergency services and they can find you faster. And if you're not sure what, what, your, what your air code or postcode is, you can look up things like check your code or locate code and they can help you find out exactly where you are. So it's always a good idea to know what your air code or what your postcode is, okay? Check. Now, what's the, oh, when you visit a farm, this is probably the first sign you're gonna see. Do you think you know what the different signs mean? Hmm, do you think you do? You're not sure? Right, 
let's kick off and learn all about the different signs that you're going to see when you visit a farm. But first of all, have you ever noticed that sometimes they're different colours? Sometimes they've got different pictures. Why is that? Well, a good way to remember what all the different signs mean is to use your hands. Can everybody put your hands up? Show me all the hands. Well done. Now I need you to wake up your little fingers, so twinkle. Let's all wake up our little fingers. Oh, there we go, well done, well done. So to help me remember what the different signs mean, I use my magic hands. Mm -hmm. When I see a red sign, I know it means, uh-uh, not allowed, that's a thumbs down. When it's red, that means no, you can't go in, you can't enter, you can't cross, okay? When you see a green sign though, you're good to go. Green is good, good to go. Blue, why would a sign be blue? Point your finger, everybody. When it's blue, then you have to, okay? You have to do something like put on your boots. Yeah, put on good footwear when you go to visit a farm, okay? No flip-flops, no roller skates, no heelys, okay? Good, sensible shoes, all right? You don't want to walk in something squidgy. But what about a yellow sign? Why would you? Oh, two hands. Yellow means careful, caution, watch out. It means warning, all right? So we have, uh -uh, yeah, you have to, careful. So let's start off with some of the careful signs that you might see when you visit a farm. I visit a lot of schools and some boys and girls think this sign means that there's snakes on the farm. What do you think it means when you see a sign like that? Let's have a look here. I'm gonna give you some time to put your answers in and I'm gonna say hello. Hello to Louie and Clara in Cardona. Wonderful to have you along. Mary and Anya, thank you so much for coming in. Hello to Kira McHugh, who farms with her daddy and her sisters, Alicia, Quiva and brother Connor. Lovely to have you along. And a big shout out to the boys and girls in Mount Shannon Child Care Centre. Hi everyone, great to have you along. Thank you so much. Who knows what this sign means, I wonder. Hello to JP and Lottie in West, Wexford, just back from feeding the cows in the yard, just like my friend Isabel. Well done, everyone. Oh, here comes the answers. Absolutely. When we see a sign like that, it means electricity. There's something electrical on the farm that you've got to be careful of. And there's loads of things on a farm that could be electrical. Mm -hmm. For example, the dairy parlour. Hands up if you live on a dairy farm. I'd love to know how many of my farmers today are living on a dairy farm. Oh, I have a few. Brilliant. Did you know there's more electricity used on a dairy farm than on any other type of farm? Mm-hmm. There is. And look here. Do you see all those bright, shiny things in the roof? The lights. How are we going to see what we're doing if we don't have any lights on? So we've got to make sure we have all, all, of, our, all, all of our lights on as well. And out in the fields... Now, we have a lot of horses here and a few very naughty heifers. So we've got to make sure we put up loads of electric fencing to make sure they stay in and don't decide to break out either into another field where I'm trying to grow my grass or even worse, onto a road where they could cause an accident. So it's very important we put up some electric fencing to make sure they stay back. Now, guys, show me all the magic hands again. Do we use our magic hands to test if a fence is on? No, you give yourself a horrible shock. Don't do, don't do any of that. So I've got a few tips on how you can test a fence. Mm -hmm. First of all, show me all the ears, listening ears. Let me have a look. Are they all out? Brilliant. When a fence is switched on, it'll make a very funny noise. Put your fingers together. Tick, 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 tick. We hear a kind of a ticking sound. Won't we? And that tells us, yep, yeah, that fence is definitely on. Or we can look and see, is there a sign up letting us know that, there, that the fence is switched on? That's a great one. Okay, so we can use our eyes. Another one is we can ask, hey, the fence on. Yeah, that's a really easy one, isn't it? And that's without using our, our little hands. But what we like to use in our farm, Hands up if you've ever seen this before. This is our fence tester and it's great. So I had to get my little bit of copper here, a little rod. 
and I stick that into the ground and that earths it, which means if this metal bit comes in contact or hits off anything electrical, like an electrical wire or fence, it'll pass all the electricity up the wire and power my little unit here, okay? And if it's on, this will tell me how much electricity is going through my fence. How many volts? A thousand volts, all the way up to 6,000 volts, okay? And that's a real easy way to let us know if our fence is definitely on or off, okay? Ears, eyes, we can ask, or we get farmers to use a fence tester. Now, I know a lot of people like to use bits of grass too, but I always like the, the, the grown-ups to do that because you can't tell how much electricity is going through a wire just by looking at it. And if your knuckles hit off that wire, you could get a really nasty shock. And it's not nice. I was trying to feed a horse one day over the fence and my funny bone came in contact with, with the electric fence and I got a horrible shock, horrible shock. So I always make sure to carry my little fence tester with me just in case, okay? What else do I have here? Oh, experiment time. Guys, I'm gonna show you how you can make your own electricity. All you need is a balloon and a piece of paper, okay? And with the piece of paper, you rip it up into loads of little pieces. Low, maybe about the size of, of a postage stamp, okay? Loads of little pieces, this is great fun, all right? And when you do that, all right, you get all your little bits, bits of paper, okay? You can do this at home, okay? We have all our little bits, bits of paper there, okay? Now, you get a balloon, you blow it up, all right? Now my hair might go a little bit funny here, so no laughing, okay? So we're gonna look, we're gonna rub the balloon onto my hair, and we're gonna see if we can make my bits of paper down. Oh, do you see that? <laughs> you see the way they all stick? Yeah, see, oh, my hair's going crazy. Look at this. <laughs> Let's do that again, I love this, this is so much fun. <laughs> and then, you see, oh, they're all coming off now. And you keep doing that, and you can make the paper dance, okay? And what's more, when they all stick, look, it just sticks up, sticks onto the balloon, that's you creating your very own electricity, static electricity, okay? So do that at home and show everybody how you can make your own electricity. And your hair goes crazy. That's my little boy. Eamon, look at his hair, it went crazy. And we made all the paper dance and stick to, stick to the balloon. So that's a real fun experiment for you to do later on, okay? What else do I have here today? Important stuff alert. Show me all the number ones, guys. We all have the number one fingers out. We do, amazing. Tractors are the number one. So we know when we see this warning sign, we have to be careful of tractors and machinery. And the thing is, guys, I have a tractor on my farm, right? And the back wheel is bigger than me. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So when I'm sitting inside the cab of my tractor, inside here, I'm sitting very, very high up, okay? I'm sitting in there, all the way up towards that roof. And when I'm sitting all the way up there, I can't see too well. In fact, all I can see is what's directly out in front of me. I can't see uh, what's on the ground immediately in front of me or behind me. In fact, the nearer you are to a tractor, the least likely I can see you. So here I am sitting inside my tractor and look, I have a very good view far away, but look, I have no view right up close. And here I have the loader on, very hard to see if somebody was standing here. And even when I'm, even though I have a huge big mirror, look at those, look at those seagulls eating the worms, the little divots. But that's all I can see, unless I can turn back a little bit, okay? So we always make sure we keep well back from tractors because we can't see you. This is all we can see. We can't see you here. We can't see you here. So the nearer you are, the least likely I can see you. And I probably can't hear you either. I have the radio on and it's soundproofed, okay? So we always make sure with tractors and machinery, we are way back, okay? In fact, Good idea to always let the farmer know you're somewhere nearby. If you see a, far, a tractor out in the field and you're standing at the gate, give the farmer a great big wave. Every, everybody wave at the farmer. Wave. 
wait a minute, get the two hands going. Well done. And when I wave back or beep the horn, then you know the farmer knows that you were there. Okay, so always let the farmer know and make sure you're well back. Now, that's my future agri kids. Do you all put a seatbelt on inside a car? Hands up if you all put a seatbelt on inside a car. Let me see all those hands. You guys are the best. Well, oh my goodness, the best agri kids ever. So, uh, your first job as my agri kids, if you know of any farmers that have a, a seatbelt inside their tractor, can you tell them to put it on? Yeah, now I know not a lot of tractors have them, but if they do have them, they should put them on because by putting them on means we stay safe and sound inside the cab and we stay on our seat. We don't get thrown around or thrown out a door. So the way you put it on inside a car is for the same reason we put it on inside a tractor. Let's all have a quick practice. Ready? One, two, three, put on your seatbelt. Click. As easy as that. Well done. What's my next sign going to be, I wonder? Now, is it Halloween on the farm if we see a sign like that? Is it? No? Hmm. Pirates on the farm? No? Hands up or write in the answer box if you think you know what this sign means. And I'm going to give a little shout out to a few more people. Let me have a look. Oh, hello to, I hope that's, I hope I say this correctly, Kayla and Ushin. Lovely to have you along. A big hello to Connor McCandless from Cardona, who is loving this class. Connor, I'm loving having you along. Thank you so much to come in. Hello to Amy Carney in Ballancolla County, Cork, who helps Uncle Jim and Cousin Brian on the farm. Now, Amy, you're going to be an expert in farm safety by the end of this. So you can tell them what they have to do to remain safe and sound when they're farming. Great job. Does the colour red make bulls angry? Great, great question by, by Keen. Would you believe, Keen? Bulls are colourblind. That means they don't actually see the colour red. So I'm okay wearing my, my red jacket around a bull. What bulls don't like is movement. So shadows, they can only see kind of shadows, greys and whites and blacks, and that's fine. It's when things start moving. They're very territorial creatures. If they see something moving, they're going, hey, what's going on over there? And they don't like that. And that's really what makes the bull charge, okay? And we'll be doing loads about bulls at Wednesday's session as well. So you can find out a little bit more about that. Top question, Keen. well done. Now, how else would it, it means danger, well done. Danger warning, Kira and Quiva, well done. But what do we have to be careful of if we see a sign like that? Well, I can tell you, when you see a sign like that, it means there's something poisonous or toxic on, on the farm. And there's loads of things on my farm that could be poisonous or toxic, but I have to use them. Because there are certain things that come onto my farm that make it very difficult to farm. There's a big word, isn't it? Now, all you really need to know with a word like that is the first three letters, pest. What kind of pests or little bold things would, it, would appear on a farm that we don't want. So pesticides are the different chemicals that we can use to make sure we have no pests on our farms. And rats and mice are rodents, so we would use something like aerodenticide for bait boxes, okay? To make sure they don't get near all our lovely corn and, and barley that we're about to harvest very soon, okay? What else might be a pest or a pesticide that we might use on our farm? Oh, him. Oh, don't like him. Oh no. Our poor cattle, they don't give us great milk when they get a little fly infestation and as for our poor sheep. Fly strike is an awful thing that can happen to our poor sheep. So it's very important that flies and insects get treated with insecticides to make sure we keep our animals nice and healthy. And it's very important as farmers that if we are using like a pour on, that we protect our skin. Okay, so maybe put on a glove. Okay, like a nitrile glove. We're all used to PPE now, personal protective e equipment. And nitrile gloves are the best in making sure no, none of that treatment or product gets onto our skin. Okay, so farmers got to keep themselves safe too. What else is a little bit of a pest on our farm? disease on our crops, funguses, stuff like that. This is like something like, I think it's called black dot for our roses and it's not nice. So we've got to make sure we use a 
fungicide to keep all of our crops nice and healthy. Okay, and finally, definitely don't want to see any weeds on my lovely crops. So we use a herbicide to make sure we keep all our crops nice and healthy. So there are the four main pesticides that we use on our farm to make sure all these little monkeys don't come and visit. Okay, and it's really it's really interesting that when you look on the back of some of those products that you see other war warning signs. So we know the yellow means uh, careful, but on the backs of kind of chemicals and, and toxic stuff, you might see signs like these. Okay, so this one means careful. It might irritate your eyes or your skin. This might be bad if you breathe it in. This might burn your, your skin if it gets onto it. That's why you put the gloves on, okay? And this is bad if we, if we pour it into like a river or, or a lake. It's very bad for the in, in environment. And this means something goes on fire really easily. So a fungicide like this has all these warning signs on the back. But it's not just farming products that have these signs. No. Here's some washing up liquid from my house. I took it from the kitchen as I came in. Look on the back of this. Do you see a warning sign there too? Yeah, it's the first one, isn't it? So we don't want to get any of that into our eyes because it might make our eyes sore a little bit, wouldn't it? And put it, this is still okay to use because we wash our dishes with it and we're fine. But it's very important that these signs are there to help us stay safe when using different kinds of products. So maybe ask your mom or your dad to show you some of the products they use to keep the house clean and see if you can recognize any of those, uh, any of those signs, okay? Very important on our farm that we lock away all our chemicals to make sure nobody gets in there that doesn't know what they're doing. So we always make sure all, all our animal medicines, all of our pesticides, etc., are locked away, okay? Now, there's something else on a farm though that could be a little bit toxic and it's a little bit smelly. Hmm, slurry. Hands up if you've ever heard the word slurry before. Let's see, who's heard the word slurry? Oh, quite a few. Well then, guys, in the Q&A box, and I only have the Q&A box working today, can you tell me nicely, what is slurry made of? And when you're answering that question, I'm going to say hello to a few more people. Let's say a very special hello to John and Magda. Lovely to have you along. Thank you so much. Great to have you here. Who else am I going to say hello to? Hello to Amy Carney. Well done. Amy, grass and slurry, that's an interesting one. Why do you think we have to put slurry on our grass? Cat oh, Steve Chapman, well done. It's cow dung. Slurry is cow dung, and that's a very nice way of putting it, Steve. So thank you very, very much. What else is, oh, Ellen knows it's poo. Oh, JBR, it's poo, absolutely. Keen Cashman, cow poo. And gas. Well done, Keen. You're a real little farmer. So slurry is poo. And as Amy was saying, why do we keep poo on our farm? Hmm? Here it is. There it is. Look at pouring it all over the, the grass to, to feed the grass. Slurry's brilliant at feeding grass. Grass loves it. Thinks it's like a big chocolate milkshake. Drinks it up, gets big and strong and so happy. And when the grass is happy and tastes good, then the animals are happy because they get nice full tummies and our cows produce more milk. Uh, our other animals get big, fat, bulky, produce more meat. So slurry is really, really important, isn't it? But the reason why we've got to be so careful around slurry, guys, is for this reason. OK, now I have a little friend with me here today. Look, what's this? Do you see him? Isn't he lovely? Now, this guy is great. This is Cyril. He's a wonderful guy. And Cyril always helps me with this part of the presentation. Don't you, Cyril? And you love doing it, don't you? Yeah. Excuse me. You do. You do. You do. He's quite the comedian. He really is. There's something on our farm called slurry. All right. And I couldn't bring a slurry tank into my house. So we're going to pretend this bottle of cola is our slurry. And over the winter months, we don't spread slurry on our grass because it's too cold and nothing will grow. But I can't tell my cows not to poo. Can't or not? So our tanks and our slatted sheds get full of slurry. Don't think all oh, the slats get full of slurry and all the tanks fill up. And because that slurry, it's poo and it's wee-wee, 
it, it's full of bacteria. And that bacteria is having a party inside those, those tanks. They're eating and drinking all the poo. And when they're eating and drinking all the poo, they're creating gases. Some are okay. Breathe into your hands. Carbon dioxide, that's fine. But there's another gas in here and it's not okay. And the reason why we have Cyril here is because I call the gas the sleepy snake gas. Yeah, you're a very sleepy boy, aren't you? The sleepy snake gas is inside here, fast asleep, and it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger over the winter months. But come springtime, we're allowed to spread slurry on our fields again. But because we've left our slurry sitting for so long, it's all separated. We've got to mix it back together again. Give it a good mix, okay? So it's thick and creamy again, and we can spread it all over our fields. Does anybody know what it's called when farmers are mixing slurry? I'll give you a little tip. It's written on top of the page here. Let's see if you can tell me what that slurry is made, uh, what, what it's called when we're mixing slurry. And I'm going to say hello to Keen and Nicola in Mallow in County Cork. Are you guys dairy farmers? I think you might be. I think you might be. So what do you think? What do we call it when we're mixing slurry? Yeah, oh, Quiva's raising her hand. Well done. It's agitation. Well done, guys. Absolutely. And agitation just means giving something a bit of a mix. If you ever have Weetabix or porridge and it gets a bit dry on top, you might have to add a bit of milk in and give it a mix with a spoon to get it creamy again. That's agitation. So that's exactly what we're going to do with our, with our slurry tank. So we get our, our, our agitator, our big machine here, and we lower it into the tank like a big mixing spoon. We turn on our tractor and that starts the agitator working. And we start agitating and mixing all the slurry together again. It's brilliant. All the poo and all the water starts, and, and we and everything starts mixing, gets creamy again. It's fantastic. But just on the, underneath the surface of that, of that slurry, our sleepy, sneaky snake gas was having a bit, bit of a snooze, weren't you? Yeah, and we've probably done something like woken it up and it's not very happy with us. No, I don't like being woken up either. We've woken up the sleepy, sneaky snake gas. Mm -hmm. Not happy. In fact, the first half hour of agitating slurry is the most dangerous because you've let all the gas go in one big whoosh. And that gas can be very, very poisonous. So it's very important. Who's outside the door there? Our farmer. Good job. Soon as they start agitating, they get out of the shed and we stay out for, at, well, at least half an hour if the day is windy. Okay, but if it's not a windy day, like today, we might give it an hour. Give that gas enough time to get up and blow away. But when we have done it and we agitated our, our slurry, we can drain our tank and spread that lovely slurry all over our field and feed our grass. And this is probably going to be a little bit of a pong of slurry in the next couple of days because second cut of haylage and silage is happening now. And as soon as we cut a field of grass, we got to feed it again. All right, because we might get a third cut then as well. Okay, so slurry, great for grass. Not very good for you or me, okay? Blue signs. Do you all remember what the blue sign meant? To get the hands, let me see. It means you have to, you have to do something. So you have to put on boots or you have to put on glasses. Let me see, I have them here, yeah. So if you're working maybe in a place where there's particles flying around, you've got to make sure you put on your glasses, yeah. And if you're a builder, you're going to know what all these signs mean. Look, I even have my hard hat here. All right, so we know. Keep our, keep our noggins nice and safe by putting on our, our hard hat. <laughs> Very good. Okay. And uh, here's a blue sign. We all know what this one means. This means we have to wash our hands. How long do you wash our hands for? 20 seconds. Come on. We, we're going to do it together really quickly. Okay. Loads of warm, soapy water. Build bubbles. Loads of them. Spread them on top. Spread them on top. Wiggle in between. Give a little twist. Give a little twist. Make sure you clean each wrist. Don't forget the thumb and the other one and rinse till they're clean. 20 seconds. 
and you're good to go. So remember, blue means you have to. So blue means you have to. What did red mean again, guys? Can you remember? Was that a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Thumbs down, yeah, it means no, definitely not. You're not allowed in there. And especially if you have a working farm, you can't just have people wandering in with the machines, with the animals, with things that could fall, we might be agitating slurry. So it's very important everybody stays out and doesn't go in. So red means eh, eh, not allowed. But don't worry, because green is good, isn't it? You can go there. And guys, I was thinking, when you go back to school, hopefully in September, have a look in your schoolyard and tell me if you have one of those signs in your schoolyard, because that means that's where you go in the case of an emergency. So green signs will always appear over doors, over windows to let people know where to go if there's an emergency. So green means go, it's good, okay? So that's why signs have all the different colors. Red is no, green is yeah, blue, you have to, yellow and black, careful. Okay, easy, isn't it? Did you know anything about science before we, we started today? Well, if you have any other questions, do give me an, an, an email, maybe info at agrikids.ie, okay? But guys, I've got some good news. You've done it. You've done the first stage of becoming a really amazing agri-kid. You've learned all about the signs that you might see around a farm. And you might see other signs, and if you do, Ask me if you don't know what they mean. Ask your mom or dad. Okay, or take a picture or draw a picture and send it in to me because you might see some along the road as well. But as you're now my agri kids, you've got to make to me your agri kids promise. So put your hands up like, like, like this. Are you ready to go? Repeat after me. I promise to never go to a farmyard on my own, never approach an animal. I don't know or without the owner's permission. I promise to keep away from all farm machinery when they're at work. If you can do those, those three things for me, guys, you're gonna be the top, top, top agri-kids, okay? Now, who would like to hear about a little competition I am running as part of Farm Safety Week? On my website, agrikids.ie, you will see this picture. If you click on it, you can print it off. Any mammies and daddies listening, aunties, or aunties and, and, and uncles, you can print it off. And I'd, I'd love if you could colour it in for, for me. And take a picture and send it in to me. Because I have two brilliant Flow Gas Agrikids goodie bags that I want to give to you guys, okay? And inside the goodie bags is even a squishy cow. They're so cool. So I've got two of those to give away as part of this very special competition. And again, if you can't find the, the picture, don't worry, just send me an email, info at agrikids.ie. Guys, thank you so much for listening today. On Wednesday, we're going to be learning all about the animals and doing a story from the big brown bull. We're gonna find out what happened when the big brown bull came to Riverside Farm. And also find out how animals use their ears to uh, talk to us or use, use their mouths or use their teeth. We'll be talking about dogs and cats as well as horses and bulls. So do tune in half past 10 on Wednesday morning. Hope to see you there. Thanks for taking place. Thanks for taking part. Have a fantastic farm safety week. And remember guys, stay farm safe. All the best, bye-bye. <laughs>